Welcome back to another edition of Fly Tying with Jim Mishura. Today I'm going to tie a Ken's Caddis Emerger. The hook that I have in the vise, this is a size 12 Demon Competition hook. and It has a 2.4 millimeter silver bead on there. And this bead is not tungsten, this is just regular uh, silver or copper or whatever they make these out of. But uh, I don't want the fly to go to the bottom. That's why I'm not going to use tungsten. This is an emerger, so it should be somewhere in the middle. I'm going to use olive thread. And I'm just going to start the thread behind the bead. And I'm even going to leave some space because that bead is going to end up somewhere around there. Maybe, yeah, somewhere around there. We want at least, we want about one eye width be, between the bead and the eye of it, of the hook. We're just going to put a base of thread down and come down slightly around the bend there. Kind of give the butt section there just a little bit of a turn. A little bit of a curve there. These competition hooks are large gap hooks. This is probably actually, I would think that the, the shank is probably just a 14, but the gap is a 12. So it's a short shank, size 12. With those competition hooks, they like to have a nice big gap on them to, so they don't miss fish. But it is a barbless hook also. I'm going to come slightly down around the bend there and go ahead and break that. Now for the body I'm going to use the gimme bands. This is plastic uh, elastic and these I got from the dollar store and they you could get them from gimmeclips.com and this was actually a dollar for all of these. They're not as photosensitive from the sun as a lot of other kinds, but they if you stretch them too far, they could get uh, photosensitive. I would say maybe 1 out of 10. I'll go to my box and the elastic will be, will be uh, popped on it. So maybe 10% of them are going to break on you. But they're good. They make beautiful bodies. I'm going to use an olive one. And this is one band. And this band was this big. And I probably got about six flies out of this already. So I put a little dart on there and I'm going to just catch the end. And another thing too when you get that dart that's where it that's where it breaks because you have less uh less material to begin with because you made that dart now we're going to bring that back up you have less material because you made that dart and now you're going to stretch it and you want to keep this keep it flat and you want to you do want to stretch it you don't want to you don't want to make it too tight or too loose also and we'll wrap it over itself maybe about halfway I get this up I'm gonna turn it now there we go and this this is a short piece. I'm gonna just finish it off with uh, by rotating. Okay, I'm gonna stop there. Now I'm gonna pull it a little bit tighter and secure it. Get a couple of good wraps in there, and then I can trim off the excess. Trim it close, but. Remember, when you pull it, 
it's elastic so when you cut it it's going to shrink back in so you don't want to cut it too close and now this little piece right here I'm gonna get rid of that because I already had a hard time with this smaller piece I'm gonna tie in that excess I'm gonna whip finish it down here This is like a combination of the Holy Grail and a Ken's Caddis. Go ahead and trim that off. Now because I have the countersink in there, I can push that on there pretty good. You know, don't force it too far because you might cut your thread, but there we go. Now we're going to put our thread back on in front of the bead. And we'll put a little base on there. Now I'm going to take a partridge feather and I'm going to we're going to tie it in with the concave side to the shank. So I'm going to take off that top section. And if for some reason your partridge feather is, is a little bad, like there's some bad spots on the tops, on the bottom section, you can take off the bottom and then wrap it from the opposite direction. I'm going to just grab the tip and pull it back. Oop, come here. Okay, now we're going to tie this in. This is a simple fly and it's going to be effective. And just like when I tied the Holy Grail, I want that silver, I want a silver bead because I believe the silver bead is going to look more like an air bubble than a gold one. Take off that take off that front tie that in. Now we're going to just give this, there's a small amount there so it's only going to be maybe three wraps With that concave section, with tying it with the concave side to the shank, now it's not going to, the barbels aren't going to go off to the front. They're going to go to the back where you want them. Get that a little bit tighter there. There we go. And then we're going to secure that. I'm going to give it two wraps before I take it off. Here we go, get it a tighter wrap there. And get a couple more wraps. Now I'll trim off that excess. push all the hackles back. I'm going to secure this a little better. Bring it right up to the hackle. And if for some reason your hackles are going a little bit forward, just go ahead and put one thread width wrap on it. Now I'm going to put the head on there. And I'm going to use, this is an olive brown, has a little bit of crystal dub in it, crystal flash in it. Got an olive brown crystal dub head. But the heads on Caddis are dark, so you just keep that in mind. And we're going to, I'm actually going to put a little bit more on there. It's kind of a little thin there. I want to get it a little, a little chubbier on the head there.
There we go. I like that better. Then we can give it a whip finish. And trim that off. Then we're going to put a little bit of head cement on the on the head. I know this fly is going to work good because I've been catching them. I've been catching a lot of fish with a nymph. Actually, with that, with the lively legs, uh, hairs, ear prints. Been catching a lot on that, but I've been catching a lot of them at the end of the drift, and it starts swinging up and coming up in the water column, them, and they've been hitting them. So I know that it, uh, something like a caddis emerger or some kind of an emerger type is going to work pretty good. So here we have a combination Ken's caddis and the Holy Grail to make a Ken's caddis emerger. And I hope that you learned something from this video. I hope that you would subscribe to my channel. Please refer me to your friends. Please visit my sponsors. Leave comments, questions, suggestions. If you'd like to purchase any flies from me, go to etsy.com slash shop slash the Flyman Gym. And most of all, thank you very much for watching my videos.